Hey everybody, the last time we talked, we decided to grow intellectually, grow personally, and help someone to grow. Okay, maybe we didn't decide to, but I'm hoping you did. So I'm going to share with you my things that I've decided to do in order to grow during this time. I'm going to grow intellectually by trying to learn sign language. It's something I picked up a little bit of and I want to continue to grow in that way. And so that's going to be my intellectual challenge for the next couple of months. My growing personally is to work out. I've learned to make bread over the um, quarantine time and it shows. And I also want to try to teach my kids some more interesting stuff. The fact of the matter is I do homeschool my kids and so sometimes I get stuck in just teaching them like book stuff. I want them to kind of adventure out and learn some more things. So I'm sharing mine with you. You don't have to share yours with me, but I want you to really keep it in mind. But I'm going to help you out with growing intellectually right now. We're going to work on some math. I legitimately love this website. It's called the Math Contest at Ole Miss. It's at um, um, Ole Mississippi or uh, Mississippi of Univers University of Mississippi, of Mississippi, I believe that's what it is. Anyway. Um, has really great problems and this is one that we're going to talk about today and I want to help you on your journey to finding the answer so we need to talk a little bit about percentages we need to talk a little bit about uh, popcorn not really let's go ahead and look at the problem together a beautiful new museum of mathematics history is opened in London England admission to the museum which includes movie and a popcorn is 15 pounds for the first month, the regular admission price was charged to all patrons. For the second month, the admission price was reduced and the average number of customers per day increased by 50%. And the amount of money collected per day increased by 25% compared to the first month. What was the price in pounds of admission during the second month? All right, you can pause the video, read it over. We're about to get started. I'm not going to solve it for you, but I'm going to talk about how we should get to the answer. Please pause if you need to. By the way, as I blathered on about what the website is, I didn't actually show you. It's called um, themathcontest.com. It's out of Ole Miss, um, and it has like really great problems. This is the problem of the week. It shows you who has solved it. Yes, some really cool kids and um, how many people got it right out of the number of people who actually tried to solve it. And there's some other cool things that you can look at. This is where I like to get a lot of the problems that you guys solve. So if we're going to talk about solving the problem, let's do that now. So we know one thing that's really important when solving a math problem is to break it down. So we've got two months of information. Month one, it cost 15 pounds, and we know 15 pounds is just the way that is the British monetary device. They have pounds. Uh, last time I checked, I don't even know if it's true now. Maybe we should check now. One pound was equal to not a dollar, but something akin to a dollar. Let's see. So today, one pound is equal to, let's see, where are we? I don't know. What is it? Today. One pound is equal to a dollar and a quarter. I'm sorry, I was looking at, I got confused by the, uh, by the chart here. And so you can see that the dollar to pound changes literally every day, um, can go up and down, but it's been hovering around this month about a dollar and a quarter. Okay, now that we know what a pound is, let's go back to our problem. So these people pay 15 pounds to get in, that was fine. And then the next month, what we know is that the price or the, the cost to get in to get a ticket was less than $15, right? Let's call that, I don't know, X. So X is the cost to get in. It was less than 15 pounds. You heard me say dollars. I'm so American. All right, so it was less than $15. And then the other thing we need to consider is the bit of information they gave us about the overall amounts. So $15, 15 pounds the first month. Um, every participant paid less than 15 pounds. That's not a whole lot of great information. But what we found out is that the number of people who attended increased by 50%. So when I think about that, the number of people who visited, let's say we had a number like 10. If 10 people visited the museum in month one, what is this problem saying about the number of people who visited in month two? Let's go back. For the second month, the admission price was reduced. We got that less than 15 pounds. And the average number of customers 
per day increased by 50%. So if the average number of customers per day increase, increased by 50%, that means overall the average number of customers who, in, who uh, went the next month increased by 50%, right? Because if every day it increased by 50%, then the whole month it must have increased by 50%. Good. So what does that mean? If only 10 people went the first month, how many people went the second month? What is 50% of 10? It's five. So if I increase by 50%, that's 15. So that means if I'm using this crazy analogy or this crazy number of 10 people went to the museum, then only 15 went the next month, which is a 50% increase. What did they find out? We found out that um, per day there was a 25%, wait a minute, per day increase, the money collected per day increased by 25% compared to the first month. So however much money was incre was um, paid this month, it increased by 25% this month. So this little fancy thing up here is the UK pound symbol. And uh, that would mean that if, go back to my analogy, if 10 people went to the place, then uh, 15 pounds was collected from each. They collected 150 pounds. How much, so I'm going to leave this to you, how much would they have collected if that increased by 25%? And then can you extrapolate back to figure out how much the actual entrance price was for month two? You guys get the question? I'm going to go over it really quickly again just to make sure it makes sense. Month one, 15 pounds for each person who went to the super cool mathematics museum. However, month two, they reduced the price. The number of people increased by 50%, right? If you like, you could use 100 and 150 if you prefer better numbers. But the number of people increased 50%, and that would mean in our case from 10 to 15. If the amount of money that they collected in pounds increased 20, uh, 25%, from month one to month two, how much was the cost of the reduce, how much was the reduced price of admittance into the super cool math museum? So you can do it with the information that I have here if you prefer to use better numbers that feel more comfortable, like 100 and 150 and whatever, that would be cool. But I would definitely go along this path. Again, a prize is available to the student who gets the answer correct. And it'll be something pretty nice. I haven't decided what it is, but it'll be something nice sent to your house. Um, also, just to mention, the last problem that we had, you remember this weird base R problem and all this stuff, and I gave you two weeks to find it. Also, I found it on that website. I really like it. Um, if you are still interested in solving, you can, but I have to let you know, I'm not gonna point fingers, but I got somebody who handled this problem very well, like awesomely and impressively, and I'm not going to say any more names, but they will be receiving a prize soon and it will just blow their mind. So you have this problem and the other problem to work on. Please do your very best to get those done and um, you can send me the answer if you'd like me to check it to make sure it's cool. My email address is dionwillis at gmail.com and remember folks, do something fun and enjoyable, and please remember, I am Queen Arcturion from the land of library. <laughs> to be silly, stay safe, and have a good time. I love you guys, and I miss you. Take care.